Um, welcome to the Alton High School Magical Singers. You're going to sing a Star Spangled Banner for us and another couple pieces. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming 
Faint is it, days can be hard. Troubles can appear with no regard. But it don't matter what happens today. Trying to face each trial that comes my way with my feet firmly planted on the ground. I'm never, never gonna sit Thank you very much, we really appreciate it. They sing a lot better than me. Um, we're supposed to have some of our organizational meetings this evening. If precincts one through seven didn't do it, they can do it at the break, precinct one will be in the corridor outside the clerk's office. Precinct two will also be meeting outside the 
clerk's office a little further down the hall. Precinct three and four. Well, the, the baked goods are over there, so maybe you'll meet in the front hall somewhere. Five and six. Um, five, six, and seven can meet over in this corridor. We're just going to make little rearrangements because of the bake sale, which is the Arlington Boys Lacrosse team. So if you go out and visit them during the break, they'd appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> any town meeting members who have yet to be sworn in? Any new or recently elected town meeting members? If so, please stand. Raise your right hand. Aye. I got to hear you. You have to speak loud enough. <laughs> Aye. Pledge to, pl pledge to attend all town meetings. To participate fully and evaluate fairly all matters before town meeting. And to vote in the best interest of the town. I support free speech and will treat others with mutual respect. In spite of conflicting opinions and will conduct myself in a civil manner. That is becoming of an elected town meeting member. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws, the town manager act, and the laws, the general laws of the Commonwealth, so help me God. The general laws of the Commonwealth, so help me God. Thank you. <laughs> Nearly at the close of the last meeting, one of our oaths was violated. One of our particular member of this body did not conduct him or herself in a civil manner. An ad hominem attack was made. The person was called on it. And I, um, I referenced that perhaps they wanted to look it up. I take the, the, uh, the liberty of looking it up for the person. Ad hominem, appealing to feelings other than prejudice rather than intellect. Marked by and being an attack on an opponent's character rather than by an answer to the contentions made. This is the kind of thing we've all been avoiding for the last couple of years, and I hope that we can continue to do so in the future and for the close of the meeting. Thank you. Um, recognize Mr. Dunn. We're doing the special, Dan. You got the uh, fast, you got the slow version on Monday, you get the fast version today. It is requested that members of the Board of Selectmen and elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the town and staff, superintendent schools and staff, committee commissions and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and superintendent, members of the general court representing Arlington and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to the articles to be acted on by this meeting, representatives of interested parties of Article 1, representatives of the news media be permitted to sit within the special town meeting enclosure. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Sonographer, you were able to get that word for word, correct? <laughs> Moderators can return to the const constable's return. Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the Board of Selectmen and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? She swears she does. Mr. Dunn. It is moved that if all of the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the special town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, April 29th, 2013, at 8 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. You, uh, it's an affirmative vote. Um, any announcements or resolutions? Mr. Smith? Scott Smith, Precinct 5, he's both pertained to that walking and bike path that runs through the middle of town. First time for spring cleaning, uh, the Bicycle Committee with some help from East Arlington Livable Streets and DPW is organizing a cleanup Saturday, 
Uh, there's some flyers in the back of the room. It's been posted on the town website. Basically, three meeting places in the Heights by the Park Avenue Bridge and along No Name Brook in the center by Mill Street and East Arlington near the Thorndike Field parking lot this Saturday. Flyers in the back of the room. Second announcement is that the three bikeway communities, Arlington, Lexington, and Bedford, have been working on improving wayfinding on the path and their consultants will be holding a public open house on Sunday, May 5th at the Lexington Depot up in Lexington Center, Sunday afternoon, May 5th from 1 to 4 p.m. And finally, uh, Precinct 5 will organize over there. Thanks. Ms. Kowalski, did you have an announcement? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Carol Kowalski. I'm Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, town meeting members may be aware that we have launched a long-range comprehensive master plan for the town. Many of you participated in a workshop in October that started this endeavor for the vision and goals of the workshop. Uh, because town meeting approved a capital budget item for this project, we wanted to give you a brief update and I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce you to the face of the project, uh, our consultant, Judy Barrett. And I want to give uh, Judy an opportunity to uh, introduce herself to you. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening, town meeting members. Um, I'm delighted to be here and very excited about this project. So I'd talk a little bit about what a master plan is and why you create one, who's, who's going to participate, and what the structure of the project will look like over the next 18 months or so. A master plan is a plan for the physical evolution of a community, taking into account the community's future needs in the areas of housing and business development, uh, parks and open space, um, historic preservation, kind of being able to sort of say, that's where we want to be 10 or 20 years from now, and here are the things that we need to do to get there, um, and to arrive at a plan that's ultimately balanced and therefore um, implementable. Why create one? Because, first of all, uh, I find that often in local government, we're so focused on the decisions that have to be made today that sometimes it's hard for us to see the consequences of those decisions for, uh, for the future. So the master plan process helps to just educate people about that. Um, but the other reason, I think the more important one, is that the master plan itself helps a community assert uh, more control over, over its destiny and its future. Who participates? Um, we hope everybody's going to participate. We have a variety of events and activities planned, um, ranging from community meetings, um, you know, sort of big venues to smaller meetings at the neighborhood or precinct level. We're going to try to get beyond the traditional meeting format for this plan and reach out to where people actually are, whether it's at the <laughs> soccer games or the coffee shop or whatever. So you'll be seeing master plan people um, out there for, for quite a while. Um, there will be a project web page on the town's website. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll be working very closely with the Master Plan Advisory Committee, which was recently appointed, and I'm going to let Carol tell you a little bit more about that. The Master Plan Advisory Committee is 11 members, uh, three of whom are town meeting members. Uh, they meet the first Thursday of every month. Uh, their May meeting is next week, May 2nd. They'll meet in the uh, Selectman's Hearing Room next week, and uh, you're all welcome to attend and participate. Uh, and I'm going to let Judy tell you a little bit more about what you can expect over the next 18 months. Okay. Um, we're sort of early on in this process. We've met with the Master Plan Committee a couple of times. Um, we will be meeting with them monthly, as Carol said, on the first Thursday of the month. So there'll be a lot of just discussion. Um, I'm not the only person working on this plan. I'm actually leading a team that includes a variety of experts in transportation and historic preservation, uh, housing, and so forth. So. Uh, we're really sort of bringing you the best uh, expertise out there that we can. Uh, we will be working on, on two levels mainly. One is sort of is helping to move the public participation process along and providing support to your 11-member mem master plan committee. And the other thing is that there's just a lot of, of work involved in research and data analysis, getting data, looking at it, thinking about what the data say. Uh, so there'll be products from this process as the, as the process goes forward. Uh, basically working papers that describe where you are today, um, where you're likely to go in the future based on your existing policies. We'll be working with the committee to articulate the goals and vision for the plan, starting with the, um, you know, the workshop that was done last fall and continuing to build on that. 
so that in the end what you have is a plan. Um, some people think of it as a report, but it's a plan uh, that says here's where you want to go and this is where, uh, this is how you're going to get there. Um, so it's very much an iterative process back and forth between research, consultation, and public participation. Um, and we'll probably be doing some very specific area studies as well, perhaps looking at you know, some of your business districts or something and thinking about the what ifs for those areas. So um, that's the 18 months, next 18 month horizon, um, is I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we also want uh, you to uh, prepare to see us again in, in the fall. If there is a special town meeting, we'll give you an update then and certainly an update at next year's annual town meeting. And we expect to also contact the precinct chairs to try to get in on your precinct meetings for an update and to engage you and hear more from you on this process. Uh, please mark your calendars for June 1st at the high school. Uh, we'll have an early afternoon uh, event that should be fun and we'll have food too. So I thank you very much for your time and uh, good night. Michelle DeRocher. Michelle DeRocher from Precinct 19. I just wanted to let you know about two additional neighborhood cleanups in addition to the one announced about the bikeway. On Saturday in Meadowbrook Park, the Conservation Commission is holding their annual spring cleanup, and that'll be from 9 to noon. There are pink flyers in the back if you need more details. And on Sunday from 10.30 to noon, in uh, McLennan Park, Reedsbrook area. The neighbors are seeking volunteers for a cleanup there. Um, I hope that you can turn out for one of these events. Thank you. Thank you, and ma'am, yep. Kate Lucian, uh, Precinct 20. I guess we're all about spring cleaning. Um, I am here to ask town meeting's permission to um, have Arlington resident Maya Ginn speak about the Arlington clean team and a town-wide cleanup event that is planned for May. Mr. Moderator, can Maya speak? Uh, she can come on up. She's a town resident. Hi. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, clearly, there's a lot of concern about cleaning up the town, which is great. I'm Maya Gins, and um, together with uh, a group of other concerned Arlington parents, um, we've created a, a group called the Arlington Clean Team Act. And as our first project, we've also organized a townwide cleanup event that's going to take place May 11th, which by then the town should be very clean, so <laughs> you should come out. Um, it'll be easy by then. Um, so uh, our concept is that we're going to meet at the parking lot um, where the farmer's market takes place, and we'll supply people with bags and whatever else they need and some snacks, coffee, et cetera, that's being donated by uh, different uh, places in the town. And then we'll have a list of suggested places um, that people can go. Um, we've gotten a great response so far, and I'm bringing it to this group because you guys are leaders in the town and hopefully active participants, and I would love your help in um, making this uh, a very successful event. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Any other announcements or resolutions? Mr. O'Connor. I just, uh, Jim O'Connor, uh, Precinct 19, your assistant moderator and a list moderator. There are two things, and I just wanted to clarify, the sheets that are in the back of the room, if you complete these for the town clerk, it gets posted on the town website with whatever email address you want, phone number, and other information. The sheet that's up here, um, the town meeting email list, if you could just click on that, it's the second tab. There's a form, it looks like it's a little large. I don't know if you can reduce it in size, but that's the page that you use to either subscribe to the uh, town meeting exclusive list. It's not exclusive for reading purposes. Anyone in the town is eligible to look at the threads and the archives list. But if you want to get information ahead of time, all the department heads and uh, committees have been really 
eager to get the information out to people soon enough so that you can read their reports, the substitute motions. Much of this was out in the last two weeks and was posted. Even the town report Joan Roman had out two weeks ago to all the town meeting members that received it on the list. If you want to, uh, in the words of cleanup, as we talked about, if you have an old email address that's on there you're no longer using, you can unsubscribe from an email address using this sheet. You can also add a new address. Some people prefer to have more than one in case they're at work and they want to be able to post. But only those that are subscribed can post and only members of the town meeting or uh, departments that serve the town can be on this list. Anyone can read the information, but it'll be real helpful if you use this sheet and to post something, all you have to do is say, please post and send it to town meeting at arlingtonlist.org, and I'll do my best to get it out as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Loretti was next to Mr. McCabe, then you. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Chris Loretti, Precinct 7. As I was leaving town hall on Monday night, I found a, a pair of glasses. They were um, in front of the, or just before the beginning of the crosswalk in front of town hall. So if anyone lost a pair of black rim glasses, these could be them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Loretti. Mr. McCabe, do you have an announcement or resolution? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. That one doesn't seem to work, Harry. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, may I ask a question of uh, Ms. Kowalski regarding her report on the uh, master planning process? Um, a very, very short, because we're not... Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kowalski, uh, many years ago when we did the last master plan, <coughs> the town meeting voted a moratorium on all zoning changes for two years, which was challenged and upheld by the courts. Why aren't we doing that this time? Isn't it kind of hard to get on a moving train? I appreciate the uh, question, Mr. McCabe. I'm Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, it's not unusual in uh, certain circumstances to require or, or for it to be desirable to have a moratorium if you're going to be making recommendations for dramatic zoning changes. With this master plan, we don't yet know what zoning changes we'll propose or that will come out of this master plan process. At that time, there was a great deal of reaction against some high-rise apartments that had been uh, constructed at that time. And I think there was a feeling that they wanted to uh, control that for a time until they could get a, a new zoning code, an entire new uh, zoning code adopted, which I believe they did do in uh, 1974. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Kowalski. Thank you, Mr. McCabe. Any other announcements or resolutions? Mr. Judd, do you have an announcement or resolution? Thank you. Just to make sure I'm heard, Lyman Judd, Precinct 9 just for those who may have a problem with their hearing. The reason I'm up here is because I was ordered to apologize to the town meeting, etc., for my remarks. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just sorry that I seem to offend some people here, but there's a matter of definition, which I heard a little bit about a while ago. The definition of a dictator is someone who cannot be challenged, whether it's a king or a uh, president or a secretary of the party, what have you. And according to the moderator, the general laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts do not allow the moderator to be challenged. This town meeting, even if it voted unanimously, could not overturn or change any decision made by the moderator. Now, I don't just refer in particular to the present moderator. This has been true for a long time because obviously that's the general laws of Massachusetts. And I really don't know if they were passed in the days of the open town meeting 
which I think is somewhat different than an elected representative town meeting. However, on threat of never being recognized again, I have been asked, and as I say, it's a, you know, an offer I can't refuse, to uh, apologize. Well, as I said, I thought that I was using the English language correctly. If somebody thinks otherwise, okay, that's, that's your privilege. And also, just as a, I don't know where this oath of office came from, but it certainly doesn't match anything that I've had before. I've been an elected town meeting member since 1972, with the exception of two years, when apparently the voters thought I needed a sabbatical, which, yeah, I didn't mind the time off. It was interesting, too, because everyone seemed to think that the town meeting was being held up by me bloviating, so to speak, and I noted by watching on television that the town meeting did not proceed any more rapidly or efficiently in my absence than if I had been there. So, be that as it may, I still ought to maybe introduce myself. My name is Lyman G. Judd, Jr. I was born at Sims Hospital in 1940. I have legally, I have legally been a, a resident of this town since then. I could give you a long bio, but I won't. I've yeah. been around and I have a memory of town meeting and what goes on at town Mr. meeting. Mr. Judd, please get to your point. My point still, and by the way, thank you for your <clears throat> splendid introduction this evening. Uh, and it's obvious the moderator and I, or Mr. should I say Mr. Mr. Leone and I, Judd, do not see eye to eye. However, there is a point of sometimes getting overwrought, which happens particularly if you've been in this town all your life and you see things changing severely. However, not to go on any further because most people here don't want to listen to somebody who is conservative or even believes in the Constitution of the United States. But, hey, that's why this, apologize is, an, already. this is why this is an elective body. It's up to the people. Good luck. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> if I heard an apology, Mr. Judd, I would have accepted it. Any other announcements or resolutions? Good. Reports of committees. Call for any reports of committees to receive. Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the report of the Board of Selectmen be received. In the blue book that you've uh, received in the general on page 29 is the start of our report of the special town meeting. And also, we have a, uh, an updated Article 2 comment that is on everyone's seat. The actual vote is identical, and the comment is uh, four words different under the letter C. So, if you are really intently reading the selectman comment, take the piece of paper and compare the difference on letter C between what's in your blue book and what's in the piece of paper. But the main vote is unchanged. Yeah. No, we're going into the um, special now. It's starting from fresh. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Any other reports, committees? Yes. Move that the uh, uh, finance committee report re be received. It's part of the annual report that you received. It's on page. Uh, the special town meeting starts on page twenty-seven. Do you have a report? Mr. Quinn, do you have a report? Yes. yes Michael sir. Quinn. We're going to do them all at once, receive all reports at once. Yeah. So this is, um, this is to dissolve a committee. Oh, sorry, I got to do the other Oh, OK. To dissolve a committee. Um, Michael Quinn, Precinct 10. I'm the chair of the Power Company Feasibility Committee. I have been in touch with other members, other previous members of this committee, including the originator of the warrant article that led to the committee's creation, and they and I all agree the committee should be dissolved. Should the need arise, we can always form again. I move to dissolve the Power Company Feasibility Committee. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor of dissolving the Power Company Committee, please say yes. 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 Opposed? So dissolved. Any other reports of committees? Okay, Mr. Tosti.
I move that the recommended votes are contained in the respective reports of the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen be before the committee meeting without further action. Second, all in favor, please say yes. Bless you, Mr. O'Connor. Opposed? All reports are received and before the meeting. Move that uh, Article 1 be laid on the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, that brings us to Article 2. Article 2, leaf blowers. We have the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen is printed in their reports. Um, and just as a preface, uh, last fall we thoroughly ventilated this article, whether or not leaf blowers are good or bad. Now we're going to talk about whether we like the bylaw amendments or not. Let's try and keep our discussion focused upon those, the bylaw and what's in front of us, and not get into the pros and cons of the machines themselves. Thank you. Um, who's going to present this report? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kevin Greeley, Board of Selectmen. Uh, the committee uh, took a vote and asked that I uh, make this report to the committee. And on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, we ask that you please uh, support our recommendation of favorable action on Article 2. Uh, many of you are very familiar with this uh, particular warrant article. Sorry. Oh. I think I've used up a second so far. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Greeley. So I was born in Sims Hospital. <laughs> in, in 2013, as you know, uh, it was uh, recommended that we completely ban the use of gasoline-powered leaf blowers on an amendment that they be banned from May 15th to October 15th. The professional landscapers formed a, organized and formed a committee and gathered enough signatures to hold a special election in the summer of 2013. And while the vote did not rate, what's the matter? 2012. Does that count on my time too? So in 2012, it did not, the vote did not uh, raise to the level of 20% of the registered voters to overturn the town meeting vote. But the Board of Selectmen feels that in, in an opinion uh, survey, if you will, it was 70 to 30 against the ban. So the Board of Selectmen believes, and any of my colleagues can correct me, that there's three basic positions. We support the status, status quo, which is a complete ban on the use from May 15th to October 15th, or we do away with that ban. And what we present to you tonight is an attempt to compromise between those two positions. The Board of Selectmen's feeling is compromise is the best way to go on this, and so we formed a committee which had four professional leaf blowers on it and four elite professional leaf blowers. <laughs> <laughs> professional landscapers, my sincere apologies. So, not much help here, am I, so far? Uh, so professional landscapers, and then four who were appointed by the moderator, and we encouraged him to make sure that if he could, and he did, appoint those who favored the ban, because our goal is to find a compromise between the two. Then a special town meeting was called, and the Board of Selectmen recommended to you, and you supported, that what we do is we put this off until this town meeting, and here we stand tonight, and uh, that we should continue with this committee, although we then at that point turned it over to town meeting, and the moderator appointed four more members of that committee, and uh, I became an ex-officio member of that committee instead of the chair. And that committee met a number of times, and what you have before you is the recommendation from that committee, which again I want to emphasize, I believe, is an attempt to find a compromise between these two positions. I won't read through it, I think you can see it. I think the best thing, if you'd like, is to read the comment, which does indeed point out the differences uh, between uh, that which exists and uh, what is now being recommended. 
uh, different period of times. Uh, it applies to professional landscapers and to uh, the town of Arlington as well, but does not, other than those that already exist, it does not apply to private homeowners. So, uh, it's, we've talked about this a lot, I believe, and again, I would uh, ask you to please consider supporting the uh, vote of favorable action by the Board of Selectmen on this compromise which has been put together by this committee. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Moore. Christopher Moore from Precinct 14. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, the language that in the selectmen's suggested vote uh, explicitly exempts from regulation leaf blowers which are fueled by anything other than gasoline. Uh, propane fueled, uh, fueled leaf blowers are becoming more available, and if we intend to create a regulatory, regulatory scheme which will last over time, it should apply equally to both propane gasoline and any other appropriate fuels for leaf blowers. Therefore, I move to amend the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen on Article 2 by changing the words gas-powered leaf blowers to leaf blowers powered by internal combustion engines, where they appear both in the recommended amendment to Title 5, Article 12, Section 2J, and in the recommended replacement for Title 5, Article 12, Section 3D1. Thank you. Thank you. It's been presented and seconded. You done, sir? I'm you done? Okay. okay. Um, Mr. Beal? Let's see here. Good evening, West Beal, Precinct 4. Um, I've got a substitute motion you all should have a copy of. Uh, the purpose of this motion is uh, essentially to hit the pause button. Um, it delays the changes uh, made to the bylaws we passed last year by another year, and it forms a new committee and gives them a crack at coming up with uh, some solutions. I believe leaf blowers can be used responsibly, and whether or not I think uh, they're the right tool in a specific job is not something I want to legislate. However, I also believe that we've seen oh sorry ma'am. However, I also believe we've seen plenty of examples of uh, where leaf blowers have not been used responsibly. So I don't want what we passed last year. And reading through in what is in front of us now, I've seen some some good ideas there, but I don't really see a solution to what we were presented with. And as much as I would like to never talk about leaf blowers again. I don't believe we'd be doing right by the town or by the job we were given uh, to pass what is in front of us now and pretend we've dealt with the issues. Uh, so my suggestion again is to delay the seasonal ban we passed last year, let a new group go to work, and see if they can come up with something better. Thank you. Okay, is seconded. Okay. Uh, Mr. Schlickman. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. I respect the spirit of compromise, but the selectman's motion before us tonight just doesn't quite feel like a compromise. It feels like an evisceration of the bylaw that this body passed last year. There have been legitimate concerns from both sides of the discussion. Legitimate concerns of people who want to maintain their property. Legitimate concerns of business owners who want to use efficient tools to do that work. And le legitimate concerns of neighbors who object to the, uh, what I would say, overuse and abuse of leaf blowers are. For example, a couple of Saturdays ago, I awoke to have three uh, people, landscape employees, across the street at the Myrak uh, property, which is the DSS 30 Mystic Street. There isn't a tree on the property, but they were blowing the entire uh, parking lot with three leaf blowers. There are places to use leaf blowers, such as where there's a bunch of leaves. There are places where we shouldn't be using leaf blowers, like 
big asphalt parking lots with no trees and no leaves. There are properties that are large that need a lot of power. There are little properties where no matter where you're standing, you're no more than five feet from the property line and guaranteed to disturb a neighbor. Compromise is important. I'd like to see something different evolve than what we've got right now. But what we've got right now, I think, is better than what is proposed, which basically eviscerates the bylaw and doesn't engage the logical protections for neighbors that should be in this bylaw. I would like to see people with large lots not have many restrictions, people in smaller lots be more restricted, and the use of leaf blowers to do things other than blow leaves, in other words, blowing up dust in parking lots, be prohibited. We could compromise by working off of the zoning bylaw and permitting unlimited use in an R0 residential district. There are a lot of ways to approach that. I just don't think what is before us tonight is a compromise situation. It doesn't meet the needs of everybody. And I think that if the professional landscapers work with the community, scale back on the leaf blowers when there are no leaves, we could all tone down the conversation and come up with a solution that will meet the needs of neighbors and landscapers and property owners. I would prefer not seeing the, uh, the selectman's bylaw passed, but in light of Mr. Beale's motion, I would hope that we conduct a moratorium, put everything off for a year, and come back with a better solution. So I urge you to support Mr. Beale's substitute motion, and if that doesn't pass, not to support action under this article. Thank you. Hold on, hands for a second. Um, Mr. Tibbetts. Hi, my name is Gary Tibbetts. I'm a landscape contractor in Arlington, Precinct 5. And I'd just like to remind you, the voters of Arlington turned out in greater numbers for that election last July. Despite it was only a six-hour voting window instead of the usual 12, despite the fact East Arlington had been hit by a microburst the night before the election, despite the fact that many of the backers asked the real, the, the, that were up for the repeal were out, you know, helping people that were affected by it and couldn't, couldn't be at the polls, despite the fact that many of us were stuck in homes with uh, damage and without electricity, people still showed up in greater numbers than they have. I think there were more people voted against this than voted for any elected official behind me. Um, even though we won by three to one, we missed by a little bit of a margin because it was a greater we had to meet a greater uh, mark. But it showed that people in Arlington had an interest in overturning this law. Because of all this interest, town meeting created this leaf blower compromise committee, which we were on, and we, 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 you know, we, we met with people that were completely against it and people that were for it. And, um, you know, we worked together. And the, the article that's before you is, um, it, it's a result of that, and everything in it, some of those changes were put in there unanimously, but all of them were put in, um, you know, by a majority vote. So, you know, nothing was pushed through. And we had a public hearing as part of this. And the, you know, people were invited to come up and make their comments. And basically, the comments that came out were three to one in favor of either no ban or accepting that, um, the compromise that we came up with. As part of our agreement with this committee and with the, um, the selectmen, the landscapers, you know, have agreed to monitor ourselves and police ourselves. We've provided through Mrs. Mahan on the Arlington list a 24-hour answering number where people can call if they have concerns about a landscaper using a blower. We've only gotten a couple of calls through it. We've handled them. Mrs. Mahan made a point to calling me back and thanking me for how fast we responded to it and took care of it. And this isn't something we're just doing now. We know this is the way things are, gonna, are going. And, you know, we've been in business, Billy and I have been in business over 30 years. The two Joes have been in business 20 years. You people know us. We stand behind what we do. 
And we, we have agreed to police ourselves and stay on top of this. And I, I'd really like to just put this down tonight, get it over with, and get on with the other business that I'm learning about in Arlington now. Thank you. Oh, great world. Well, we're not knowing the Parliament stuff. You don't clap and yell and hoot. Never did. Never did, Mr. Don't give me that look. Uh, Mr. Ruderman? Mr. Ruderman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. Uh, I was also a member of, of this uh, committee, and, and I did come away with uh, a different perspective. And without having uh, discussed or organized this with my other committee members, I'd like to offer you uh, a minority opinion of one, mine, uh, but I'd like to offer you a rationale for voting down the uh, selectman's recommended motion. Um, it all depends upon perspective. One could just as rightly say that the um, opponents of a leaf blower ban uh, gained a three to one pur plurality in the summer uh, special referendum. It's as equally valid to say that the um, proponents of the ban, knowing that the state constitution, thank you Mr. Adams, uh, places an extremely high bar on a referendum for overturning uh, the elected town meetings motion, uh, knew that it was not likely to pass and stayed home in order to make sure that it wouldn't pass. And they won. Like I said, different perspective, equally valid viewpoint. You could say that the existing bylaw, which will go into effect on May 15 if, if not otherwise changed, is too harsh and goes too far. You could also say that it was amended, compromised, discussed, debated for more than, what was it, two hours uh, at our last uh, annual town meeting. And then it passed. I can't believe that uh, a small majority, but a majority still of the members of this body as then constituted were deluded or, or so mistaken on, on the facts or so, or so misled by uh, someone's opinions to have gotten it completely wrong. Yet, it was felt that in light of the uh, numbers returned in the referendum, a compromise committee was, was uh, I don't know, uh, called for, appropriate, fine. I'll take that in good faith. It was done by, uh, it was done in the spirit of compromise. Our former uh, chair of the selectmen is an honorable man. So are they all honorable men who uh, constituted uh, the um, representatives of the Professional Landscaping Association. But I offer to you this observation. I've never before served on a committee in town meeting in, in, the, in the decade that I've been a member where membership was dictated by, by the existence of direct financial interest in the outcome of a vote. Now I know that we've in past years asked speakers before this body to, to disclose if, if it's not obvious, you know, I have a financial interest in the way this vote may go. So I ask you to read the recommended vote of the selectmen as formulated by the committee as discussed and, and pushed forward by, by a block of its members as having a direct financial interest to those members. And, and again, I do not allege any kind of um, you know, collusion or conspiracy here because they are all honorable men and they wanted to represent what they felt were expert opinions. Of course, you could have also represented expert opinions if you'd looked in the uh, town phone book past the page that says L on it and looked for somebody who might have been an audiologist or a mechanical engineer or acoustician or someone else, a mechanical engineer, someone else who could have brought an epidemiologist, somebody else who could have brought a professional opinion to the question of are these good for the public, these gas-powered leaf blower devices? And if they are, under what circumstances should they be used? No. The experts on the committee and, and, and a couple more members uh, uh, nominated at large, one, one again with another financial interest, a, another person who was um, an employee of, it, of the largest uh, you know, private landowner, a Winchester Country Club in, in town, there was a clear and direct course 
to the discussions. It was roll back, roll back, roll back. And not in a very sophisticated way either. You see what we, you have in front. You, the, the rollback of the restrictions on leaf blowers is based upon time and place. And as, and as our esteemed colleague, Mr. Beal, uh, said, basically it says you can't be a jerk and spray the, uh, the dust and leaves onto your neighbor's yard. And that's about it. That's about all, all we seem to have accomplished in all of our meetings and public hearings. I offer to you that we tried in this body a year ago, upheld in a special referendum, and present to you tonight the option of saying, no, we think we got it right. We think we got it right back at the last annual town meeting. And we'd like to give it at least one year to see if it works before we decide to rip it apart top to bottom. So I offer you this rationale. Two minutes. As a, again, minority opinion of one, to reject the selectmen's recommended vote as promulgated by the committee and to maintain the existing bylaw and see what happens when it goes into effect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ruderman. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Ban. Hi, Carol Band, Precinct 8. I noticed there was a full moon while I was driving over here tonight. Just saying. Um, um, I was also a member of the committee that drafted the so-called compromise that's before you tonight and feel that the composition of the committee, which included a lot of landscapers who have contracts for the town, was not really representative and that the crafting of this amendment is not a compromise but a complete evisceration to use Mr. Schlickman's word, of the seasonal restriction voted by the town meeting, a decision that hasn't even had a chance to be experienced. Last year in this hall, you saw a compelling presentation that led to a vote to approve the seasonal restriction of gas-powered blowers. You learned about the health hazards that these machines present to their operators, to pedestrians walking by, to, and to neighbors, and you heard about the harmful particulates that they create and the toll that the noise takes on the health of individuals and the quality of community life here in Arlington. And you voted to enact a compromise, not a complete ban on leaf blowers as, was, as originally proposed by me, but a compromise, a compromise that restricted their use to the months of the year when there are no leaves on the ground when their use is even more unnecessary and harmful than usual. A time when people are outside enjoying their porches, their patios, and the opportunity to open their windows and let the fresh air inside. A time of year when all that there is for leaf blowers to blow is dirt, animal feces, carcinogens, and dust. This compromise that you voted to approve last year won't be in effect until May 15th. Let's give it a chance. What before, is before you tonight is not a compromise. You've already voted on a compromise. In last spring's town meeting, there was a fair vote and you made a good decision. And the town backed up that good decision in a special election in July. As a matter of fact, after that special election, someone from Newton called me and said, congratulations, Arlington, 80% of your town backs a restriction on leaf blowers. And that's the way I like to look at it. Um, Despite the efforts of a special interest group that poured money and misinformation into trying to change the result of town meeting's vote. You've already voted on a compromise and you upheld it in the special town meeting in October in this very hall. You've already voted on a compromise and notes from constituents across the town are asking us to uphold this compromise. And tonight, I ask you to again stand by your decision to support the seasonal restriction on gas-powered blowers. Your original decision was a good one, an informed one, and the right one. Vote to keep the decision-making power of town meeting from being derailed. Say yes to quieter neighborhoods, cleaner air, and a true democratic process. Vote no on the amendment before you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mark McCabe. Mark. Mark McCabe, Precinct 2. I stand to terminate all debate on Article 2 and all motions before it. Thank you.
We have a motion to terminate debate on the article and all matters before it. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. It's not a two-thirds vote. Um, <clears throat> Mr. O'Brien, Andy. Andy O'Brien, uh, Precinct 16. Um, I was really looking for some kind of compromise when it came to sound and emissions. I don't know, uh, I think the last time when I spoke, I talked about the um, Edmunds.com uh, testing of uh, off the shelf uh, two stroke and four stroke uh, leaf blowers from uh, Home Depot. And uh, in, many ca in most cases, the uh, greenhouse emissions were about 15 times that of a uh, F-150 uh, Raptor pickup truck. Um, I think everyone knows which leaf blower is the most bothersome. It's the two-stroke leaf blower, the large two-stroke leaf blower. Very noisy, sets out the most amount of emissions. Um, if that had been on there, I'd probably be voting for the compromise. You know, I understand that you might need the extra power during the fall or the spring, but you don't need it in the summertime. We just don't need that kind of noise. We don't need that kind of emissions, especially in the summer months when people are suffering from um, respiratory ailments. But I'm also going to go on now to uh, one of the uh, bylaw amendments that has to deal with propane. Um, Propane is a uh, natural gas distillate. Um, it's a liquid, it comes natural gas liquid distillate. And um, natural gas is fairly clean, produces fairly few um, greenhouse emissions. Propane produces almost no greenhouse emissions. Um, propane, well, if you're getting, unless you're getting your electricity from a renewable resource or hydro or nuclear, um, elect, uh, an electric leaf blower is likely to produ produce indirectly more emissions than a propane leaf blower. Um, about one third of, uh, when, when, it, when electricity is produced, about one third of uh, uh, energy is lost in terms of heat loss and another third is lost in the transmission of electricity. Um, some states like Texas have been really pr uh, pushing propane for uh, um, landscape equipment. That would include lawnmowers. Uh, during uh, many months, during summer months in Texas, uh, the, uh, the communities are often uh, in violation of EPA uh, uh, emissions regulations. Propane, though, is still used, and many landscapers use propane in their their uh, lawn tractors and in uh, uh, other uh, landscape equipment. Um, I, I, it, is, it is my hope that uh, in the future, uh, rather than using gasoline as the uh, source for our uh, lawn equipment, that we will switch to propane. So I will probably vote against um, the compromise um, bylaw amendment, but if it comes to uh, propane, I probably will vote against that as well. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Klein. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christian Klein, Precinct 10. Um, a quick question about the committee. Is it an, an official committee of the town? Which committee? The compromise committee. The leaf blower committee that yes. met over the, I believe it is an official committee. They had open meeting law, they advertised, they posted their minutes on the town website. Are they providing us with their report? I think the report is the recommended vote. Okay. 
Um, I would like to ask, Mr. Moderator, what the there has been some contention about what the the different the compromise of the committee, um, what the composition was. Could I ask what the vote was on the recommendation we have in front of us from the compromise committee? Ms. Mahan, as chairman of that committee, can you answer that qu question? I am Mahan, town meeting member, precinct 14, and I had the dubious distinction of being your chair of this town meeting <laughs> committee on leaf blowers. Uh, answer it as succinctly as possible in order to allow every committee member to feel as though they could represent their views. What I said to everybody who was on the committee, because we had two distinct um, camps of a uh, school of thought, we only had one, 10 to zero. We had for 12, 13 members, we only had 10 members who showed up who were able to be at the final meeting where we voted. We only had one 10 to zero vote and that was to change gas to gasoline. And then what I did was I went through point by point, bullet point on everything else and um, substantively every other vote was seven to three. Okay. Um, I have a question about um, item number five, I believe, no, excuse me, item number six, uh, which says the restrictions set forth herein. Does that, is the term restrictions, does that only apply to uh, line two subs A, B, and C? I would believe it would apply to all restrictions set forth in the bylaw. My question is the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the article, uh, line three, at no time any leaf blower shall be used in a way to permit the distribution of leaves, dust, or debris, et cetera. Is that only applying to the town and to commercial, or does that apply to everybody? Ms. Uh, Mahan, can you answer that? Um, very succinctly, uh, what we did was the current noise abatement bylaw, as well as other bylaws, it states that no debris, whether it's snow, leaves, dust, or whatever, can be... Um, blown, distributed on property, but this, since we were saying that this bylaw would just apply to municipalities and the town, um, we wanted to restate that. So the, the, I guess the short answer is number three, where, while it states it just applies to the town and commercial uses, mm -hmm. on the current existing bylaws, it also applies to residents, or it applies to everybody. Is it a point of information or a point of interruption? Right, Juliano, can you tell us exactly what that says? If Diane, your <coughs> Diane's interpretation is wrong? You don't have the floor. The, the initial question was whether line six, which says that the restriction set forth herein shall not apply, et cetera, whether that only is referencing to the listed restrictions under two which is A, B, and sub A, B, and C, or whether it applies to all of the five up appearing before that. Uh, Juliana Rice, Town Council. Um, my view is it would apply um, to the whole thing. Um, the definition in D1 of uh, gas-powered leaf blowers, or leaf blowers for purposes of this bylaw, is gas-powered leaf blowers used for commercial and municipal purposes. So my reading would be that the entire rest of Section D would apply only to commercial or municipal use of leaf blowers. Okay. That answer your question, sir? That does answer that question. Um, the, the one remaining question I do have is um, when there are uh, considered violations of this ordinance, what is the proper enforcement mechanism? The enforcement mechanism is the same as for the remainder of the noise abatement bylaw, mm -hmm. which is a, um, a uh, $200 ticket per violation. Is it the, uh, Mr. Moderator, is it the responsibility of the health, health department or the police department? It is uh, both the police department and the health department. Okay. And so if a violation is occur is occurs, who would be the is the homeowner 
obviously the homeowner should attempt to uh, speak with the the individual involved, but at that point, do they call the police? Is that the? They could do so, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Berkowitz. Thanks, Mr. Moderator. Bill Berkowitz, Precinct 8, and good evening, town meeting members. In many public policy issues, there are competing rights on both sides, and I think legitimate rights, too. And part of our job is to find a proper balance uh, between the what I feel are the legitimate rights of both sides. Uh, in the vote that we took last May, May uh, May's town meeting, uh, that was a vote as a reminder to those who were here and as background for those new town meeting members. That was done at, that was done itself after several compromises. It was a contested vote and a close vote, of course, but it was also upheld by several different on several different occasions by a vote of that town meeting. The proposed vote before us from the selectmen, when you get down to the specifics essentially restricts leaf blowers on Sundays from June 15th to September 15th. Um, essentially, it says that you can't uh, use leaf blowers on summer Sundays. That amounts by my count to 15 days, give or take. On the other hand, the original vote that we took last year at last year's town meeting was to restrict use <laughs> between May 15th and October 15th, which amounts to 150 days, give or take. So as contrasted with the original 150 days, under the proposed vote of the Board of Selectmen, <coughs> we would go to 15. That's a decrease of 90%. The question before us, I think, now is that what we want. More specifically, in deciding <coughs> these questions, I hope we will consider whether first, th whether this proposed vote includes significant restrictions on the use of leaf blowers at all. Secondly, <clears throat> excuse me, whether it's in the spirit of our town meeting vote last year. And third, is it a fair compromise? Does it fairly reflect the balancing of legitimate rights and legitimate positions on both sides? I would leave these questions to you, to all of us, to consider before voting. If your answers are no, then I hope you will reject the proposed vote of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. This lady in blue, I forget your name, I'm sorry. Yep. I'm uh, Debbie Edelstein from Precinct 9. I um, applaud the effort to reach a compromise, and I would like to say that the, the selectman's comment in plain English actually makes sense, but the rest of the document as written, when all two years from now, when different town meeting members are here and different town councils are around, will be meaningless. I, I kind of find it linguistic nonsense. Um, it seems to be self-contradictory. Uh, self it's a bunch of embedded negatives um, that don't, won't be meaningful down the road. I think we'll have a hard time interpreting it. Uh, it's meaning down the road once stripped of the plain English version from the comment. So I think that regardless of how you feel about the issue, this, as written, is not adequate to, to enforce. Uh, to even understand what it is we're trying to accomplish. So on that basis alone, let alone however you might feel about the issue, I suggest we reject this and go back and write it in a way that could be understood by somebody not in this room today. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Leonard. I got you, yeah. This guy here.
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. Two points of clarification, if I could. In the comments, six lines down, three quarters of the way through the sentence where it begins, the central change is being. I'm confused to the point where it talks about commercial and municipal operations and individual homeowners and residents does any of that also include apartment buildings? I know it sounds like splitting hairs, but to me, commercial would be businesses, municipal operations would be town yards, individual homeowners would be homeowners, and the residents in the homeowners. I'm wondering, should an amendment be in there that basically says, oh, by the way, brick apartment buildings are also included in this? <clears throat> Ms. Rice, uh, apartment complex is considered commercial, and would they fall within the purview of this bylaw? I would think that under this bylaw, they would be viewed as residential unless they were being cleaned up by a commercial landscaping firm. Okay, thank you. Could I have that clarified a little bit better, please? They're residential. They are. So let us say brick apartment buildings are considered residential. People live in them. Secondly, in the handout under section six, manner of enforcement, the last line stating in a court of competent jurisdiction, could somebody clarify what we're calling in the town of Arlington a court of competent jurisdiction? A court of competent jurisdiction under this, I think, would be the Middlesex District Court located at 1010 Mystic Valley Parkway in Medford. Why Cambridge is in Medford, it is, but that's our court of competent jurisdiction on matters such as this. So as it is self-explanatory, a complaint would then go from the town manager to the board of selectmen to possibly a court of competent jurisdiction before yep. a person would possibly be able to get any satisfaction. Yes, yeah, so uh, towns have to follow an administrative procedure, and if people don't follow what they're told to do, they end up in court. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Mahan, you had your hand up. Do you wish to continue speaking? Go ahead. Oops, cut me off by seconds. Diane Mahan, town meeting member, precinct 14, and Chairman elected by the committee by this town meeting who, who set up a, what happened basically was we had the town meeting where we discussed this at length. Uh, the vote went through. There was a special election. We had a special town meeting. This town meeting said basically we're going to take the selectmen's committee and make it a town meeting committee, add some more members onto it, um, and proceed there too. Um, I was elected by my colleagues on the town meeting leaf blower committee to uh, come up with some sort of a compromise. And I think what I heard initially and read initially and spoke initially with town meeting members who saw the results of the special election, both sides said they won and both sides said the other side lost and that's open for interpretation. Um, but basically the reason this committee was set up was because of the results of that special election to ask the original committee to be expanded, which it was. Um, we had four landscape contractors. We had four town meeting members, which were pretty much, in my personal opinion, split two to two. We had four citizens at large, which were added after the special election, which pretty much were split two to two. We had myself, and then we had uh, a few other members from the Board of Health ex officio. Um, in the end, we had 10 members present who voted, and pretty much the vote went seven to three, which is kind of uh, similar to the uh, special election vote that we had back in the summer. What we did was we also had a public hearing, which is what town meeting asked us to do. And what I, it was really a difficult task for me because I had three or four sides, but basically at least three sides that came into the meeting. And I said, let's just come to this meeting Let's look at everything. Let's come up with a compromise. In the end, you don't have to agree to it. 
which is why I feel we had the seven to three votes on everything except for changing gas to gasoline. I will tell you that every single committee member, including two previous speakers who have spoken before, before town meeting, had extensive um, uh, conversations and recommendations that were adopted as well as suggestions that were put forth that said if you agree to all of this then I can agree to something else if not it's all or nothing um, that didn't come out in the end Th the bottom line is this town meeting set up a committee because the, the residents came out and, and spoke however they spoke it's for you to interpret it it's not for me to tell you how that vote was what we did was, and what we heard from the one public hearing, we set up our structure and we had a lot, a lot of meetings. Not as anything looking for sympathy. I'm a court reporter. I lost a client in terms of all the time I spent on this, and I know my fellow committee members spent a lot of time on it. But we set up so that we could have two public meetings. We only had one. And what we heard was that we heard from residents saying, if I go out there, and I need to do an hour on a Saturday or two Saturdays, I want to be able to do that. And we do have a current noise abatement law that uh, signifies decibel levels. What we did was, because it seemed like the main offenders that people were concerned about were the landscape contractors, were the town of Arlington municipalities, people who were running this for an hour, hour and a half on end with two, three, four, five. And what you see in here is we say, one leaf blower per 6,000 square feet, no more than 30 minutes at a time, no use at all on a Sunday afternoon. That doesn't apply to residents, because we heard from residents, sometimes I can only do it, I get home from church, I can do it from one to three, one to five. Um, we spoke about where the debris would be. Um, you could not put it on, on property lines. I did speak to town council in terms of private residents. You can't do that either. So, I mean, it's up to this town meeting if you want to set up another study committee to look at um, possibly another compromise. I think what we need to do is we took a vote. We had a special election. You all set up a subcommittee that was said to, to look at this. I do know the minute that the um, restrictions, and some people say a different word, but it's a restriction right now, what we have currently, I only got two calls or two emails um, and re referred it to a number, and I put that number out because the landscape contractors have said, and they're all Arlington residents, all, all Arlington business people. We want to work with each other. They've all said, let us know. We'll police ourselves. I've only gotten two complaints. I probably heard more than two complaints in this town hall. You, you do have a compromise before you. Um, to say, let's not do anything and go back for another compromise, that's your, that your purview to do that. But I want to tell you that the current leaf blower town meeting subcommittee, everyone keeps saying selectmen, it came in through the selectmen's report because the selectmen ultimately said, we're going to present uh, the findings to you. But this was a town committee subcommittee that was um, formed from the special town meeting that we had last fall that said come up with some sort of a compromise. We have a compromise here. Everybody was heard, even as I said before, speakers that are saying please don't vote for this now. They, they were never limited. They had a lot of input in, into what is before you. Um, you want a compromise, it's here before you. Um, if not, um, I say God bless to the next committee. Um, I can't go through this again. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a lot of time, a lot of public hearing, and I just hope you would put your faith and trust in the subcommittee that was formed by you at the last special town meeting that had a public hearing that came up with these recommendations. Let's give them a shot and see where they go. And as far as the amendment by Mr. Moore or the previous speaker, Myself personally, um, I have no issue with that. It, I was asked why we didn't look at propane. We weren't charged by this town meeting to look at propane or any other combustible material. We were look, charged to look at gas, which we changed to gasoline, but I have no issue and I would support his amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a 10 minute break, come back at 20 of. The precincts that have meetings, uh, please go and organize.
Mr. Downing has the floor. Mr. Downing, you have the floor. Mr. Downing, you have the floor. Please come forward. Jim Downing, no, Bill Downing. Where's Billy? Calling Bill Downing. Oh, it's his. Yeah, he's got about 10 seconds before I'm going to move on. All right. Is he here? What happened to him? Did he leave at the break? I don't see him. I don't, oh, maybe he's at his organization meeting. I don't know. Well, I'll go to someone else and come back to him next. Um, Ms. Mamone? Hi, Frank. Zarina Memon, um, <clears throat> Precinct 12. I'm sorry, 21. Got it backwards here. Anyways, I have um, some concerns about what was written for the recommendations by the selectmen um, in that <clears throat> I feel that they should have been a little bit more clear on the, the lot size versus acres. Our properties are listed under acres, and this says lot size. I think there's no consistency there. Um, so that was a concern. Also in um, portion C, they wrote down leaf blowers. And my understanding was a one single leaf blower was gonna be used for a property of 6,000 square feet. So they're assuming there's gonna be multiple leaf blowers being um, used per, per property. And so that was concerning. Um, <clears throat> the biggest things that I have for concern are that we have uh, a tight knit community here in Arlington it's very dense, and I think that we do need the ban in effect. I'm curious about the, the committee that was formed. I want to know the breakdown of how people voted uh, with the seven and three. Is it mostly uh, who were the voters, and did Diane, did you, uh, Mr. Moderate, could you find out the chairwoman of the, the committee there? Had she voted also, or was, it, uh, was she part of the... Uh, what was that the word that was used? Uh, Ms. Mahan was a member of the committee. I believe she did take votes on each issue. As so to how did. they voted, the committee voted on each issue, I think short of getting the minutes. Um, well, she probably would have an idea, right? I mean, since there was a... Ms. Mahan, can you enlighten her? Oh, that one works now. That one works now? Yep. Our able body, Ms. Brandhouse, got it going. Um, of the 10 voting members present, and yes, I did vote. Mr. Greeley was ex officio, he did not vote. Um, Mr. Feeney and Ms. Conley from the Board of Health were ex officio, did not vote, as well as we did have um, Attorney Rice Town Council and the town manager there who also did not vote, they were ex officio. But on the seven to three vote, it's easier for me to say, from my memory, um, we had, um, for the three, Mr. Rudiman, Mr. Edelman, and I can't remember who the other third person was. It's in so the these are both town meeting members, we're saying. The, are the contractors and, I'm sorry? Oh. Oh, Ms. Jill Snyder, you were there and voted in the negative? Okay, so th those were the three um, who voted in the negative and then you okay, weren't there we'll, the we'll, night that we voted, Ms. Van. I, I apologize, but you weren't there. You had a, I think you were away on business. So, Ms. Snyder, um, Mr. Edelman. Ms. Snyder was, I believe, through a, a town meeting member appointed by the moderator. Mr. Edelman was right. a citizen appointed okay. by the moderator, so, Mr. Rudiman. So, the understanding I'm getting is the four were contractors, 
um, and one was yourself, Chairwoman, so that's five votes, and then two other citizens voted uh, uh, for this. Okay, I one just wanted to clear. One was a citizen and one was a town meeting member. So if, you, if you're doing the math, we had three and two in okay. terms of deciding votes. I have another question for Ms. Mahone, if you don't mind, moder Mr. Moderator. I want to know what was the history uh, in other towns that have had passed this uh, ban, such as Brookline and Cambridge. Um, Cambridge. Does she have any understanding of that? Does she understand Cambridge? Or I'm, I'm just saying, if they had a they had a committee and they discussed this. So I want to know what the results. If they discuss other towns, if they had any issues um, with Brookline and Cambridge. We had available as reference materials um, the town of Brookline and city of Cambridge, and from um, those materials and others, we crafted the compromise that's before you today, tonight. Okay. All right, so I understand the <clears throat> Brookline has violations listed in their um, bans. I also understand that Cambridge has a lot size that's larger than ours. They also have a real restriction, um, real heavy restrictions, including for the contractors, they have to ask the town manager by written notice to uh, use the uh, leaf blowers. And I also understand that the even large uh, property over 10,000 square feet which are limited to one uh, leaf blower actually, they also have to ask for permission to uh, use uh, the leaf blowers during the summertime. My concern is that um, I feel that the original article that was voted on with the special election was fair. Um, I do not favor this um, recommended vote by the uh, selectmen and I feel that uh, <clears throat> There are certain environmental issues that have still not been addressed, such as the health concerns, um, topsoil um, removal, uh, which can cause uh, problems with desiccating roots. And um, I also feel that there are no violations noted in this uh, recommendation by the selectmen. So I, I'm in favor of trying the measure that was voted in by us. Thank you. Mr. Downing. Hi, my name is Bill Downing, Precinct 15. I was a member of the Leaf Blow Committee. I'd like to share some facts with you. Uh, Ms. Mr. Downing, you're, you also have to disclose that you have a, uh, an interest in the article as a business owner. I, I'm the owner of, uh, uh, let me start over. My name is Bill Downing, Precinct 15. I was a member of the Leaf Blower Committee. Um, I also own Downing Landscape Services, and I'd like to share some facts with you. Leaf blowers are getting quieter and cleaner. Manufacturers have worked hard to meet the new EPA standards set for machines sold in 2012. They had to drastically reduce emissions while at the same time not reduce power. They have met the EPA standards and the next issue they are working on is noise levels. Many are 75% quieter than they were a decade ago. The goal is that all of these machines will be operating at 65 decibels or less in the next two or three years. They're also talking about a buyback program to get older blowers out of circulation. Going forward, I feel that leaf blowers won't even be a concern three or four years from now. The question of cost increase has come up. The cost increase to our clientele is a minimum of 35%. 20% in increased time and 15% in increased payroll to retain our good employees. They could go to a, another company in Lexington or Winchester and not have to broom out a driveway, not have to sweep out a driveway and just run a leaf blower. Their job is much easier. People have come up here and told you all kinds of things. Please, base your opinion on the facts, not scare tactics. We use these blowers every day, and our lead levels and overall health is fine. The Board of Health has had no problems arising from the use of these machines. The Mass Department of Health reports that childhood lead poisoning in Arlington has been zero for the past two years. We are some of the first to donate to schools, islands, and everything else in town. Please. Work with us over the next two or three years. Don't make a tough job tougher. I believe town government should be working with small business, not against it. 
Seven out of ten people in town voted no ban on leaf blowers. My precinct voted 75% against the ban. And I am here to represent them with my vote. Please join me in, in vote for the compromise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Doherty, you are next. Then Ms. Broadman. Oh. Oh, you got a microphone thing. TV can't catch you back there, Jim. Jim Doherty, Precinct 2. Move the question in all matters related to it. We have a motion to terminate debate on all matters before the article. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion, that is a two-thirds vote. <clears throat> okay. So, to exp We have the recommended vote of the selectmen, which is in your report. We have Mr. Moore's amendment to that vote which um, changes gas powered leaf blowers to leaf blowers powered by internal combustion motors engines excuse me internal combustion engines and then we have mr beale's substitute which basically puts a moratorium on the bylaw in existence until january of 2014 and forms another committee so first we're going to vote on mr beale's because if that wins that's the substitute, and the other two we're not even going to bother voting on. If it loses, we'll go to Mr. Moore's internal combustion, and then we'll go to the recommended vote of the selectmen, if, depending upon how our two previous votes go. Okay, everybody understand? Okay, I'm not hearing no. So, all in favor of Mr. Beal's substitute motion, please. Yes, sir. Okay, we have Mr. Beal's substitute motion on Article 2 to put a moratorium on the current one that's on the books until January of 2014 and form a new committee. As detailed, you should have that on your seats. All right, so we're going to vote on that. All in favor of that substitute motion, please say yes. Yes! Opposed, say no. No! I'm sorry, Wes, that loses. That's done. Now, we have Mr. Moore's substitute, which is going to substitute the words leaf blowers powered by internal combustion engines for the words gas powered leaf blowers. So this is the propane ones. This will cover any internally combustible engine. All in favor of that amendment, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. Huh. Chairs in doubt. All in favor of the amendment, please rise. Mr. Schlickman, Mr. O'Connor, Mr. Trembley, and Harry, why don't we let the young woman right next to you count? You're a little unsteady tonight. Oh, Harry's going to go for it anyways. You're his daughter, right? That's Harry's daughter. Ms. Mahan, how many up front? Six. Six up front. Six for the amendment up front. Mr. Schlickman, how many to my left? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Mr. O'Connor? Forty-three. Forty-three. Mr. Trembley? Thirty. Thirty. Mr. McCabe? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. All opposed to that amendment, please rise. All against the amendment. Ms. Mahan? Five. Five. Mr. Schlickman, how many to my left? Nineteen. Nineteen. Mr. O'Connor? Fifteen. Fifteen. Mr. Trembley? Twenty. Twenty. Mr. McCabe? Fifteen. 
15. The amendment passes 125 to 74, so it is amended. Passed 25 to 74. That now brings us to the recommended Board of Selectmen as amended. All in favor of the recommended vote, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion, that is a negative vote. Five people have arisen. Five people have arisen, same tellers. All in favor of the recommended vote, please rise. Ms. Mahan, how many up front? Ten. Mr. Schlickman, how many to my left? 27. 27. Mr. O'Connor? 28. 28. Mr. Trembley? 34. 34. And Mr. McCabe? 14. All opposed to the recommended vote, please rise. Opposed. Mahan, how many up front? One. Mr. Schickman? 17. 17. Mr. O'Connor? 31. 31. Mr. Tremblay? 21. 21. And Mr. McCabe? 25. 25. The vote passes as amended, 113 in the affirmative, 95 in the negative. The vote passes. <laughs> Gentlemen, please, please, we're not the English Parliament. That closes Article 2, brings us to Article 3, Appropriation Visitor Center, Uncle Sam Plaza. They're looking for $10,000. Um, Ten. Ten. Oh, wait a second. That's in the corner. Who's going to speak to this, Mr. Tosta? Mr. Tosta, are you addressing this? Mr. Dunn? Are you presenting this? Someone's got to get up and ask for the money. Selectman Arca, I got a recommended vote of the FinCon. Who? Oh, Angela's going to present. Come on up, Angela. Someone's got to get up and ask for the money. Shh. Ms. Olszewski has the floor, please. Angela Olszewski, Precinct 17 and Chair of the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. I want to ask you all for just a moment to pretend yeah. you don't live in Arlington. You live in one of the suburbs further west and it's a really nice day and you've decided to take a long bike ride along the Minuteman Bikeway. You're riding along and you've been traveling for quite a while and you're just about ready to take a break. You've come to Arlington Center and you hear some music. So you decide, oh, this sounds good. I think I'll stop. So you go over and there's a small musical group playing on the brick terrace by a statue and there's people gathered. So you stop to listen. And while you're looking at the statue, you realize it looks familiar. It's Uncle Sam. And then you read further and you find out that Uncle Sam was born in Arlington. Now you're kind of interested and you see 
a little booth uh, with a visitor information sign and you decide to walk over. There's a friendly volunteer there to greet you and he welcomes you in and you see a video playing and it tells you about all the great things to see and do in Arlington and there's all kinds of brochures and there's fun souvenirs and the volunteer just wants to tell you all about everything. So before you leave, you ask for some recommendations for where you can have lunch and the volunteer is happy to provide that. So you go and you have lunch and you think, I never realized how much there was to do here. I want to come back. So what does a visitor information booth do? It says, welcome to Arlington. It gives people a reason to stop. It gives us a place to distribute information and to encourage people to come here and visit and spend money. We want to talk about, people ask, well, um, what would it look like? So the, the picture behind me is a prototype. Um, if you decide this evening to appropriate the funds that we've asked for, the town will go through the procurement process and the booth will look, we, we can't pick the booth before the procurement process, but I can assure you that everyone who's been involved wants something that's attractive and that the town can be proud of. We're asking you to locate it at the Uncle Sam statue. You could have the site plan, please. With the other slide, the other slides, um, the the site plan. We went out with um, our booth, our tent that we use for town day, and we tried in front of the Jefferson Cutter House, and we tried at this site, and we felt that this site was better for us for traffic. Um, we've been working with the town because we know that the bikeway is going to be reconfigured, and so you know we're going to work on the site plan with that. There's also historic restrictions in front of the Jefferson Cutter House. Um, so that played into it. In the article, you'll see that it says temporary. We kind of like to say semi-permanent. And one, what we mean by this is that we're asking you to make a relatively modest expenditure. This isn't a big facility or building with restrooms right now. It's something that we want to try out. We want to see how it goes. Um, we we want to, we know that there's also a grant for the bike path, the multi-town grant that was mentioned, um, that's gonna have some signage and some amenities. And so we wanna give the town the option if we choose that we should do something later, that this type of structure could be picked up and moved and reused by the town for another purpose. So that um, you know, we make that investment, but it can be used later. Um, we've reached out to businesses, uh, we've reached out to the chamber and we've gotten lots of support. We have a budget of $25,000, and most of you, I don't think we got every chair, but it has the budget on there, which talks about one-time costs um, and some operating expenses. We, um, we're looking to continue operating expenses at later dates with um, support from the businesses. We're hoping to have sponsorships. We want to sell souvenirs. We're also hoping to use that performance space next to the Uncle Sam statue to you know, permit for other reasons for people to stop. So it's things like music and everything. Um, what this does for Arlington is it gives us a place to tell our story. Because everyone always says, oh, you know, we don't talk about our history, we don't do this, we don't do that. And I tell people, tell a story. Just keep telling the story and people will listen. And this is a way for us to tell the story. And it brings people in and we know that we have, we have a hotel, we have restaurants, and when people go to those institutions specifically, that revenue goes back directly to the town. And then if they shop, they come for a movie at the Capitol, or they go to the Regent Theater, they're supporting our business community, and that keeps us vibrant. I sometimes go to community development workshops, and it's about you know revitalizing your downtown. And if I say one disparaging word about oh you know this or that or anything, everyone looks at me and they're like, "You're Arlington. You have you have everything, and you have all of those people coming in from out of town on the bike path." And we do. What we want to do is get everybody to just stop and pay attention and visit here and spend money. So on behalf of A10, we this is a really big priority for our committee. We respectfully request your support for this article. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tosti. Alan. By the way, th this is on page 27 of the fin Finance Committee report. Uh, ever since I became part of the Arlington community in the late 60s, we have complained about how Concord, Lexington get all the glory and the visitors and the money 
in Arlington, where, as we've seen many times, where the action was, gets a footnote, if we're lucky. The only way to turn this around, by the way, I heard a comment today, you know, there was, and if you read the Boston Globe, there was a Lexington per Patriot State Parade, there was a Concord Patriot State Parade, there was a Boston Patriot State Parade, not even a mention of, of us in our parade. The only way to turn this around is to educate people as they drive by, as they walk by, and as they bike by, and show them the great restaurants we have, the museums we have, and tell them about this place and its history. We finally have a group who is doing the legwork, but they need our support to move their efforts along. We think this is a great first step. The visitor booth combined with the improved signage that we're gonna see in the annual town meeting articles uh, could put us on our way to improving our economy, you know, in our sort of place in history and our place in the world. I think uh, one comment has been made sometimes, you know, a temporary booth isn't this a lot of money to spend for uh, a booth that might not be there. Well, first of all, there's not a lot of places to put uh, a visitor center in the town of Arlington. Uh, it's, it's not like Lexington that has a fairly expansive place. So I have a feeling this uh, visitor center or visitor's booth is going to be there for a long time. And if we, even if we decide like two years down the road or three years down the road, this is working great. Uh, we, ought, we, we ought to find a place to put a permanent visitor center uh, with facilities. My guess is it's probably going to take another three or four or five years to find that, to go through town meeting, to go through the bids, to find a process. So I, I think it says temporary in the warrant, but I think this booth will be around for quite a while, um, no matter how successful it is. Um, so again, we, we think this is a great first step. This should move it along, and we ask for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. Two quick questions, if I could, please. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in wherever this building is, after we've spent the money and everything, how can, how can it be uh, preventative maintenance be taken care of on it to prevent it from possibly being an object of tagging? To me, it sounds like it's a very nice idea, but it's just basically a bullseye for let's tag that. As, as we all know, tagging is a problem in the town of Arlington. What preventative measures could be taken now to prevent possible tagging on a brand new building in the town of Arlington? Mr. Tosti, can you um, address that, please? Well, I, I think the, the major thing is it's right in the uh, crosshairs of two of our major streets in town. There's traffic coming up Mystic Street all the time. The area is well lit, and then you got traffic on Mass Ave. Uh, so I think it's location. Uh, when I've seen tagging, especially on the bike path, it's in secluded areas. But uh, Ms. Uh, Clarissa could perhaps Thank you. add. Um, Clarissa Rowe, Precinct 4. Um, as a person who deals with tagging in their everyday business as a landscape architect, the most important thing to keep people from tagging is having a place staffed. And that's the point of this um, building, is that when people are out, we'll have people in the booth um, to prevent the tagging. But we appreciate John's concern, and if he would like to um, sign up to be there, we, we would accept his help. <laughs> You have such a way with words, Carissa. <laughs> Tagging is um, spray painting your name on something. What do you call it? Graffiti. It's the new word for graffiti. And right, what I'm curious about, Mr. Moderator, is naturally somebody can't be there 24 hours a day. Mr. Chaplain, how are you going to protect this building from such bad things? And how are you going to keep it in nice repair over the next couple of years? <laughs> Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Uh, frankly, I, I don't think there is a way to absolutely prevent tagging of this building uh, or any public or private building uh, during overnight hours. 
but as the uh, as ATED uh, comes forward with an implementation plan uh, based on Mr. Leonard's concerns, I'd I'd push them to, to put together within their operating costs that they've budgeted a preventative maintenance plan in general for the building, uh, as well as possibly considering uh, consider uh, security cameras as well. Okay, my second question, Mr. Moderator. At one particular time, I was on the Patriots Day Committee and the Town Day Committee, and we had a couple of times where incidents would come up that the town, to the best of my knowledge, paid for walkie-talkies. And there was a contest going back and forth between the two committees, who owned the walkie-talkies, who had the rights to use them, they were town-owned property. It, it was like a contest back and forth. And how does that relate to this nice little That's what I'm building. about to say, Mr. Moderator. Yeah. If this is not going to be a permanent building at this particular time on a permanent site, let's say, are we possibly going to enter into a contest again where some people could say, I don't know what you've said about the town paid for this building we have something going up in the Heights. We'd like to take this building up in the Heights for a day or so and put it up there. You can't say no because it's a town-owned building. Um, Mr. Chapdelaine, how are you gonna keep this building permanently affixed to that site? And if you don't, who's gonna get to play with it? <laughs> Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. I, um, we'd have to, we obviously have to go through a procurement process, but I don't foresee this building being so flexible that it can be trucked around and brought to different locations at one time. So we're, there will not be a problem in regards to, it will, I mean, from, from what I understand, it's not that big that maybe a flatbed or something could possibly move it. Um, I, I, I suppose a flatbed could move it because a flatbed would probably bring it in. Uh, but I, I wouldn't foresee that happening without there being a greater public discussion with ATED about whether or not it's successful in the location that it's in. If it did come to it, one last question, if it did come to it, who would, would, you, would the, the, the Arlington uh, Tourist Board, if I'm getting it right, would they be the people to give the last say on whether that building would be moved any other place in town? Um, no, I, I, I would imagine the, the last say would come between my, myself and the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen has jurisdiction over the space it's in currently, and wherever the other space was would be based on who has jurisdiction over that space. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Haina? Yeah. Mr. Harrington, Stephen? Stephen Harrington, Precinct 13. Um, I just have, I'm gonna vote no on this. I have um, three issues. Uh, one's location. Um, you know where they're talking about. It's right at the intersection of Mass Ave and Route 60. Um, that's not really an attractive part of Arlington, even with a reconfiguration. Um, this is a building that's going to be shoehorned in, and you've got to look at the backdrop. It's a big building behind it, with two or three stories. Um, the only business that is close there, I suppose, um, Mr. Moderator, is uh, what's the closest business to this building? That's Frank so, Chiara. He's an attorney next to me. Yeah, so attorneys. <laughs> so, so it's not like you're going to have visitors come in and spend dollars um, unless they're injured crossing the bike path um, or trying to get across Mass Ave or, or um, Mystic Street there. It's, um, it's not a very attractive location. And, um, oh. and so location is everything here. And I can think of a dozen other locations in Arlington that are so much better. Um, we've got a garden over here. It's a great place for visitors to come. You go up and look at visitor centers in other cities and towns, and they're attractive places are in attractive. It's not shoehorned in as though, um, and it would be out of scale. I think it's not, um, I don't think it's a well thought out location for it. Um, second, um, I'm not too happy about, um, you know, the amount of money that's being spent on it. Um, you know, ATED is sort of, you know, it's 25000 here, it's 20000 on designing signs, it's going to get $20,000 on another sign later today. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars that is being done by a thousand cuts. And, you know, we should have a plan. And there should be a plan that's laid out. And it should say, this is how we're going to do it. And there should be quantitative metrics that say, this money is going to earn this type of return to us. And none of that exists. 
and so so I, I don't like this because of um you know it's yet another expenditure and twenty five thousand dollars um it's money it's real money and then finally i i don't like um uh this um because i think that it's important that you know um that town meeting um consider carefully um why this type of thing would be um, introduced now, um, you know, sort of between two controversial bands and on a special town meeting, and 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 the, what I mean by now is we're going to tear apart that area soon, and that's going to take a year or more, and there's going to be a lot of changes in Arlington on Mass Ave, and we don't need to do this now, and in fact I'd urge you not to do it now because there's plenty of time to do this later. We can come back here next year. There won't be a chance, really, to to um, put this building in place um, and then have it around a construction site, which is again not the place you want visitors to congregate. There's no parking. And um, uh, finally, you know, I, I'd just like to say that putting um, uh, a visitor center in a location um, that's not attractive um, is costs money that you know I think is just thrown away. And um, it's a it's a location that's better served by open space. Um, it's a um, I, I think there's plenty of storefronts in Arlington. You want a temporary site. Um, there's plenty of places to put it with a temporary location to start up a visitor center to do a capital expense, which is what this is. I don't know why it's not through the capital expenditure bill, uh, committee, but to make a capital expense on something that is temporary. Um, certainly is no financially. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Sharp. <coughs> I think this is a great idea. I think it would be a real asset uh, to the town. So precinct name and precinct? I'm very sorry. Ted Sharp, Precinct 7. Um, but I, I have to contradict my esteemed colleagues' uh, vision of this, imagine it in total silence because, as we all know, busking is not allowed in the town of Arlington. Well, actually it is. If you get a permit, busking is uh, playing music, making a, a public performance for money. And this is prohibited by bylaw in the town of Arlington unless you get a license from the Board of Selectmen, which is, of course, completely unavailable from the Board of Selectmen because there is no process. So the vision of music, I think, is a wonderful vision that is currently impossible in our town. And I would encourage you to encourage the Board of Selectmen to put in place a process by which people who wanted to play some music in town could have the right to do so. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Reedy? Alan Reedy, Precinct 16. I also think this is a fantastic idea and a relatively modest investment, and you, you should go ahead and vote in favor of this. Um, Mr. Moderator, with town meeting's permission, I'd like to uh, request um, permission for uh, 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 Bruce Fitzsimmons to uh, address this issue. Oh, okay. He's a, res he's a resident he's a of the town. Resident. He's also on the ARB, so come on forward, Bruce. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Alan. Uh, just by uh, two points of clarification, Bruce Fitzsimmons, um, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the uh, Board of Directors of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce and not as a member of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Second point of clarification, my office is also adjacent to this site. Uh, I do not depend on walk-in business, so I do not foresee that this is going to have any impact on my own financial well-being, uh, direct impact. Um, the Chamber of Commerce strongly supports this article and urges town meeting to, to adopt it. Uh, the town, for the past several years, has made a concerted effort to expand the role of tourism as a component of our economic development. 
The Visitor Center will help these efforts take shape by providing a focal point for tourists visiting the town and will orient them to the town's historic sites and other points of interest. <coughs> this is really an investment in the town's future. Increasing public awareness of Arlington as a tourist destination, bringing revenue to the town and its businesses, and increasing the vitality of the town's commercial centers and heritage sites. The Chamber enthusiastically supports this effort, looks forward to working with the town and ATED, and strongly hopes that town meeting will approve the article. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wagner, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Carl Wagner, Precinct 11. I'm also a recently turned former member of the Uncle Sam Committee of Arlington. Um, so I can't speak for the committee, but I can say that uh, this is a great location for a small building that kind of takes the vision of uh, what Mr. Fitzsimmons just said about our hiring of a tourism person, our creation and building of the volunteer-led ATED committee, to the logical next step, which is to bring the people traveling through the town to see more and hear, hear more and learn more. Um, from a Uncle Sam perspective, speaking personally, I would say this is the house that we should call, at least jokingly, Uncle Sam's house. Um, the reason is the location, obviously. I, I would hope it looks a bit more like Uncle Sam's house might have looked. I can't tell you what it looked like because Arlington knocked it down in its wisdom back between 1750 and 1800. So it wasn't us, it was Monotomy or West Cambridge or whatever that knocked it down. But I hope you see this not just as an Arlington house, but really as the place to turn more focus on Uncle Sam. And I just say uh, parenthetically that if you ask the uh, Arlington Historical Committee, or if you ask the Arlington Historical Society about Uncle Sam, they really don't have anything to say. So I hope that that'll be a major part of this house. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Um, Sean Harrington. Sean Harrington, Precinct 15, move the question. Oh. We have a motion to terminate the debate. All in favor of terminating the debate, the debate please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion, that is a two-third vote. <clears throat> we have the recommended vote of the Finance Committee for $25,000. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion, that is an affirmative vote. Okay. That brings us to Article 4. Mr. McCabe, I recognize you. Hold on, Sean. Mr. Moderator, Harry McCabe, Precinct 21. Yes, sir. I rise to propose a substitute motion for Article 4. Yes, sir. Uh, copy was put on everybody's chairs, and there's a stack on the table at the rear of the hall if anybody hasn't received a copy. These were on your chair Monday night? Yes. Mr. Moderator. I got you, Sean. Yes, sir. Mr. Moderator, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to be uh, asked to sponsor this uh, proposed substitute motion Ooh. by the uh, original <coughs> petitioners, uh, three of our finest young ladies, uh, members of the graduating class at Arlington High School, uh, not members of the body, so they could not make this motion. And I am honored and privileged that they asked me to do that. In any event, I, Harry McCabe, town meeting member, Precinct 21, do hereby submit the following substitute motion for Article 4 of the special town meeting. Yes, sir, you can submit Voted it. Do I have a Tyler second? Eight. Do Voted I have a second on Mr. McCabe's motion? Second. It's before us, Mr. McCabe. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Moderator. Uh, voted that uh, Title 8 of the town bylaws be and hereby is amended by adding the following new Article 9, following section, Article 8. Article 9, sale of drinking Mr. McCabe, water. it's not necessary to read it, it's before us. 
so you may want to preserve your time for the um, Thank you. Moment. I'd just like to read the uh, first section. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sales prohibited, section one. It shall be unlawful to sell non-carbonated, unflavored drinking water in single-serving polyethylene terephthalate bottles of one liter, 34 fluid ounces or less in the town of Arlington on or after January 1, 2014. The remaining sections deal with exceptions and uh, enforcement and potential suspension of the bylaw. Uh, Mr. Moderator, the young ladies that are uh, proposing this, uh, sponsoring this article actually uh, are in the auditorium and I request your permission and the permission of the meeting to have them come forward to speak to the article. I uh, I they are Miss Sonia Zacher, Miss Amy Curl, and Miss Marina Milan. I My understanding is that Amy Curl will speak for the group. I believe all young women are residents of the town of Arlington, so they have permission. They're residents and citizens of the town, yes. They have permission to speak. Yes. Could they come forward, please? Yes. It is my pleasure to introduce Amy Curran. The, the other two young women can come out if they want to and join in the fun. And the second lady is Miss Zacher. And the third lady is Marina Milan. I hope I got the pronunciation correct. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Harry McCabe. I'm Amy Curl, Precinct 13, and I'm here to propose Article Number 4, which is the substitute motion to ban the sale of non-sparkling, unflavored drinking water in single-serving PET bottles of one liter or less in the town of Arlington. I'll try to be brief, but please bear with me. I'm a little nervous. This is my first time doing this. I'm sure it won't be my last. <laughs> As the president of SAVE Club, the environmental club at the high school, I've been studying this issue extensively for the last four years, and this year, with the recent progress of Concord's similar bylaw, we believe that this could be the next step for Arlington as well. Bottled water is a small product, but it has a large impact when it comes to the Earth's future. It is a product that was created to make money, and when pe while people may be able to afford bottled water, the Earth will not be able to sustain the current level of production and overconsumption of it for much longer. Bottled water companies are using dangerous amounts of natural resources to package and market their product. The production and transportation of bottled water uses more than 17 million barrels of crude oil every year. If we, the town of Arlington, pass this article and stop the sale of bottled water, the effects would be monumental. The goal of this article is not merely to reduce our plastic consumption, but also to educate Arlington about an environmentally friendly and healthier alternative, tap water. The tap water in Arlington is some of the cleanest water in the country, as found in a study done by the MWRA. Arlington residents can put their mind at ease knowing that what comes out of their tap is just as clean as bottled water, if not more so. Tap water is regulated by the EPA, while the FDA regulates bottled water. The EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, does hundreds of tests each month on tap water, but the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, only requires one report every month from a bottled water company. Furthermore, major bottled water companies such as Aquafina and Dasani sell bottled tap water and pass it off as spring water. The water sources they use are not always as clean as the Arlington water supply. Additionally, bottled water is often stored for long periods of time before consumption, resulting in chemicals from the plastic, like BPA, leaching into the water. Health issues aside, disposable water bottles have further environmental repercussions. Plastic water bottles are often thrown in the trash instead of being recycled, and they still contain water. This may not seem like a problem, but the extra weight and energy required to burn the plastic and water costs the town of Arlington and its taxpayers more money every year. Even when they are recycled, the harmful production of the bottles has disastrous environmental effects. We also want to address some of the concerns that have come to light since the filing of this substitute motion. We would like to ban the sale of water bottles and not soda bottles because water is available free from the tap and the expense of bottled water is unnecessary. 
It's a fairly new product and has only really come out in the last 20 years or so. In addition, Arlington was found in a study done by the Department of Public Health to have the least percent of overweight students out of any town in the state of Massachusetts. We have faith in Arlington residents that they will be able to make smart decisions when it comes to their beverages and alternatives. We wish to encourage those who want to make healthy choices to use reusable bottles as an alternative, which saves money and resources in the long run. This proposal is not about taking away people's liberties or their freedom to choose, but about saving the planet and working towards a better future. Removing bottled water is a small task, but it will have a big payoff when it comes to the environment and our planet's future. Buying soda should not be the natural alternative to buying bottled water. Carrying a reusable water bottle should be the natural alternative to buying bottled water, and we hope to change that starting here and now. There is an alternate substitute motion, I understand, to form a committee to study this, but forming a committee will not be enough. I have studied this issue for four years, and banning the sale of single-serving water bottles is the best solution for the problem at hand. Earth's supply of natural resources will continue to deplete, and if we refuse to take action now, how would a committee be able to do better over the next year? We have already done, excuse me, I and Sonia Marina have already done over the last four years what this committee would be doing over the next year. It's time to stop talking and start taking action. You can take action tonight by voting in favor of Article 4 and in favor of banning single-serving bottled water. Thank you, and I am available for any questions should you have them. Thank you very much. No English Parliament stuff. Ms. Mahan, if someone gets up and asks you a question, you guys can just kind of wait over there by Chief Jefferson. Diane Mahan, town meeting member, precinct 14, just very briefly, and then um, Mr. Ziner, who is the store manager of Stop and Shop here in Arlington, who is not an Arlington resident, I'd like to, he's requested to, respectfully request to speak to town meeting um, at the end of my very brief remarks. I will just say on this, um, I want to say kudos to Amy Carell and um, her two colleagues um, in terms of their presentation, not only here tonight, but at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. They've certainly done the research, and I know they've worked on this for two or three years and are now appearing before a town meeting, the Board of Selectmen. I'll just say as my hat as a youth uh, cheerleading coach, yes, it's a sport, and a high school cheerleading coach, um, this would not work for me as a coach of a uh, youth sport. Right now, we have very limited fountains in our fields. As a matter of fact, a lot of them get vandalized and they don't get um, replaced, as well as you can't put your bottles under there. And I can tell you when we're doing double sessions in August from nine to four, everyone does come down with a water bottle. I do have a water bottle here tonight. I've used it. This is my third time I've refilled it with my Brita filter water. So I say hats off to um, what they're trying to do and everything that the Save Club does. But I can tell you as a youth and high school um, coach, this would put um, a, a undue burden on um, the, the athletes that I coach in terms of keeping them hydrated as there are no alternative uses on our parks and fields as well as at the high school. So with that, if I could, um, Mr. Moderator, through you, ask if Mr. Ziner, the store manager of Stop and Shop, could um, address town meeting. Um, what town does he live in? I believe it's Boxford. Okay. Uh, we need the permission of the meeting for Mr. Zyman to speak. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. Mr. Zyman, please come forward. You have the remaining time, five minutes and six seconds. Um, first, I'd like to thank the town oh, members. Introduce yourself. Andrew Zyman, store manager of Stop and Shop. Um, 56 Burning Bush Drive in Boxwood. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for allowing me to speak. Amy, I believe your brother does work for me, and if this should pass, <laughs> I promise he'll be employed for at least a couple days. So, <laughs> so uh, he has avoided the topic, and I don't believe he knows it's yet. But again, I'd like to thank everyone. I'm Andrew Zainer, I'm the store manager at your local stop and shop down the street. As I'm often reminded, the only supermarket in town. I believe that will be changing soon. Um, on behalf of the stop and shop supermarkets, we have concerns with the petition to amend the town bylaws of Arlington to do prohibit the sales of non-sparkling, unflavored drinking waters in single-serve containers of one liter or less for the town. Um, at Stop and Shop, we offer a variety of product to our customers, a space constraint that we are in the store. Uh, we strive to offer the wide selection 
of product throughout the store. Consumers now are time stock. I think you heard it today. Um, a lot of demands for convenience. Bottled water is certainly a commodity that has just taken off. Um, as you can see in our weekly ad, bottled water is in every single week, Poland Spring, Aquafina, Dasani, every single week. Uh, this proposal will impact sales and availability of product, but will not address the major issue at hand, which has been discussed. We believe this proposal will force Arlington residents to purchase water bottles out of town. It does not prevent individuals from bringing such containers into town in neighboring towns or when visiting relatives or vacationing but merely prevents the sales of one particular class of liquid. It will reduce the consumption of water, which is a healthy and viable product for our consumers of all ages. Although it, the intention is well deemed, um, we feel the proposal ordinance is unfairly targets a single safe product and only addresses a small portion of the litter expense and a single vital source, which is water. How often do we hear no soda but water? This does not address the complex problem of what we do as a society with our waste. The bottled water container itself is not the problem, but the problem exists of what people do with the container after consumption. This represents a small segment of the waste stream. Stop and Shop is strongly uh, committed to being sustainable company and protecting the environment. We strongly recommend, believe in educating our consumers our customers and encouraging the recycling program is the best solution to aid in the protection of the environment. We know that promoting the proper disposal of recycling of such commodities is important. Since containers <coughs> are such recyclable commodity, they should be placed in those used in a small container, for example, local curbside collection, which I'm sure the town has, uh, and other um, collection agencies that we have in town. Two minutes, I've run paragraphs, so. Yeah, uh, we oppose the adoption of this measure and like to partner with the town of Arlington to educate and promote recycling. In fact, tonight, April 24th, the town of Concord is holding, and I'm sure everyone's talked about Concord in their minds and in their committees, the town of Concord is voting on if they want to maintain their ban on water bottles. So very interesting to see what their outcome is. But Stop and Shop is going to record as opposing this. Um, we thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Ms. Rice informs me the motion to appeal in Concord failed. Okay, just for your information. All right, was that it, sir? Uh, Mr. Harrington. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Sean Harrington, Precinct 15. I would like to first inform the committee that I will be withdrawing my substitute motion um, on Article 4, but I will. Uh, I would still like to speak on the. Well, uh, you never made it, so you don't have oh, to withdraw it. Well, I well throw it away then, or recycle it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good alternative. Um, so, it's not hidden that I'm against a bottle of water ban in Arlington. Um, and there are many reasons, and I'm going to go into them for starters. The claim by proponents of this ban is that it will reduce our plastic waste. This is simply not true. Businesses will replace water with soda and other sugary drinks in plastic bottles, PET and non-PET. Not only do these drinks have large amounts of sugar, but contain higher plastic content. Not only that, Arlington's trash does not go to a landfill, it goes to an incinerator. The bit, this ban ignores environmental impact of other containers as well. For example, glass bottles. Um, <clears throat> there are many stores which sell water in glass bottles. Um, and glass bottles take more energy to produce and transport than plastic and wreak havoc upon recycling equipment. A second claim is that if we ban bottled water, then people will in turn uh, go to tap water instead. Um, this, claim this claim has also been uh, debunked. The reality is, is that when bottled water is not available, people will be more likely to simply buy other plastic bottled drinks instead of using reusable containers or searching for public sources. This has been proven uh, by our neighbors in the North um, <clears throat> Concord. Uh, many businesses have shown an increase in uh, soda, uh, soft drinks, and what have you uh, once uh, the ban on water happened. Um, Arlington has a safe water supply. However, some dispensers of that water are not as clean as us, like the Mohan um, stated earlier, according to the National Sanita Sanitation Foundation, public water fountains contain 
2.7 million bacteria cells in one cubic inch, even more than public toilets, which are sanitized more often. Um, using reusable, um, uh, reusable uh, bottles isn't always an option either. Um, and sometimes you forget them, you know, people shouldn't be punished uh, for forgetting that. Also, this ban has a negative impact on people with medical issues that require drinking water that is filtered beyond municipal requirements. Uh, there's a case in Concord where there's an 82-year-old woman who, whose body takes in more iron than it's supposed to. So she drinks bottled, a certain type of bottled water because of the way it's, um, <coughs> excuse me, because of the way that uh, the, it's filtered. But when she goes out into town, she can't buy that bottled water. Yes, she could bring a reusable container with the water in it, but she has arthritis. So holding one of those big containers isn't necessarily a good option for her. This ban would harm our weakest residents. Um, this ban counters the idea of buying local. It hurts commerce. Um, as experienced in Concord, this ban will lead Arlingtonians to buy bottled water in, other commun in another community. It would only make sense that when people leave to spend their money on water, they will also um, buy other goods outside of Arlington instead of supporting local businesses. Um, in January, Maria Rodale, the CEO and chairman of Rodale Inc., wrote an article called The Bizarre Insanity of Banning Bottled Water for the, um, for the Huffington Post. Maria's company is the world's largest publisher of health and environmental content, content and actually her company is the book that published An Inconvenient Truth. Um, and in her article, she wrote, banning bottled water might feel like a win in the short term, but it's a major loss in the long term. And the biggest loss is its misdirection of energy it creates in very intelligent people who could otherwise be solving real problems. We should be putting efforts toward increasing business, recyc business recycling in town. Other positive efforts could be to increasing recycling bins in public. I've been up Mass Ave all the time. I rarely see a recycling bin except one or two in the center. I think that's something that we should remedy. Um, and not only that, bottled water is 100% recyclable. We need to change minds, not take away something because minds haven't been changed yet. So in conclusion, I please ask this body to vote down this substitute motion. It's really a bad idea for the town of Arlington um, and quite honestly, a bad thing for consumer choice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Loretti. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Loretti, Precinct 7. Um, in my day job, I work as an environmental consultant. And while I don't claim to have done a lot of work in the area of uh, PET bottles, I have looked some uh, at the issue of, of their recyclability. Um, after I got a phone call last night after I had dozed off to sleep by one of the proponents, I had asked her if she'd be willing to send me any background information they had on this article. And she gave me the handout that she had, um, or emailed me the handout she had prepared for the selectmen. Uh, and so some of the content of which was recited earlier tonight. And so I was inspired to do a little bit of, of research on my own. And in these type of um, questions about different products and what's better, tap water or bottled water, there's a whole field called life cycle assessment that's been established over the past 10 or 20 years. It's probably more common in Europe than in this country, but still quite a few people do it. And I found one nice study that was done by a graduate student at the Univers University of Michigan called uh, Comparative Life Cycle Assessment of Bottled versus Tap Water Systems. And in it, he compares tap water with various forms, forms of bottled water and looks at the energy consumption, the greenhouse gas emissions, and other forms of environmental impacts. And I think to the proponent's larger point that we have tap water and it's a um, better choice than bottled water, I would say they're absolutely right. The impacts of of bottled water is significantly greater than tap water, and we do have, have very good tap water in this community. But nevertheless, I rise in opposition to the substitute motion. And I do that um, because I think it lacks perspective, and as Mr. Harrington said, it's, it's a distraction from really more important issues and activities that people could be focusing on to improve the environment. I'd like to address a few of the specific points that were made by the proponents, and some of them they may have stated tonight, others they might have mentioned solely to the selectmen. 
Um, one of them is the issue of BPA, which is a, a chemical that's used in making some forms of plastic. However, it is not used in self-serve water bottles. The citation that the students used was from uh, a website for some, the American Camp Association. And what they were talking about were polycarbonate bottles. And polycarbonate bottles are the ones you used um, for reuse of water. They've been largely replaced now by stainless steel bottles. And in some cases, the, the polycarbonate bottles are used for the five-gallon five gallon, um, uh, water bottles. But it is, BPA is not used in self, um, small, single-serve drinking water bottles. So you can eliminate uh, any concern you might have about that. The other thing I'd like to address is the question of recycling. As Mr. Harrington uh, noted, um, PET is very easily recycled. And as I looked around this room, Mr. Moderator, I saw any number of people who are very likely wearing recycled PET bottles. And the reason for that is, is PET is a form of polyester. And it's very commonly used in fleece manufacture. Um, some manufacturers of fleece, like Polartec, claim that all of their uh, product contains at least some uh, recycled PET. And so Mr. Harrington uh, assures me that he is wearing a, a, a jacket that contains recycled PET bottles. Most, um, most um, polyester carpet uh, sold in this country, is the majority of that material is recycled PET. Uh, this is a material that can be used and is used um, extensively in recycled form. And certainly there, there, is, there are opportunities for a lot more of it to be recycled. I'm not sure it's quite as low as, as the students have, have asserted. Um, but that's an opportunity. The other thing I, I think we should need to give some perspective on is the greenhouse gas emissions that result from the systems or the, you know, the manufacture of the bottles, the use of the water. The um, one study I looked at when you did the calculations, it worked out of uh, greenhouse gas emissions of about 0.3 pounds per bottle. To put that in perspective, every time you use a ga burn a gallon of gasoline in your car, you're, burn you're releasing about 20 pounds of uh, CO2 emissions, or about 70 times as much. The figure of uh, 17 million barrels of, of oil equivalent being used to manufacture the bottles is correct, but you need to put that in perspective a year. That, uh, perspective as well. That's an annual figure. This country uses 19 million barrels of oil per day. And what that means is the amount of oil equivalent going into these bottles is less than one quarter of one percent of our energy consumption. I think it's hard to argue that we're really um, looking at a depletion issue here. And what that suggests to me is that the energies really should be a should be focusing on that other 99.75%. And so I'd suggest the, 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 the real opportunities are increasing recycling and also re increasing the availability of tap water. Um, I'm glad to hear one of the selectmen mentioned the issues with the town parks. There's things that can be done locally, like establishing policies for ensuring that all of the drinking water fountains in town are continuously operating, that they have filling stations for bottles. There's also opportunities at the state level. This state has a very weak um, building code in terms of requiring drinking water fountains. Right now, I believe uh, TD Garden has none because they're allowed to do that. Other states are far more progressive in requiring um, that, that public buildings and, and any building indeed that's open to the public has drinking water available. And, and indeed, I, I understand that one of the proponents works for one of our state representatives. I think that would be an a far more effective and useful activity than trying to limit uh, bottles just in the town of Arlington. So in closing, I, I do appreciate the activity of the proponents, but there are really much better and much more significant actions they could take than, uh, than what they're doing by trying to ban bottled water here in Arlington. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Pass. Mr. Swilling. Nathan Swilling, Precinct 4, I move to terminate debate on all matters. Second. Mr. Swilling has made a motion to terminate debate on all matters before the article. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion, that is a two-thirds vote. Okie dokie. We have before us the 
Substitute motion made by Mr. McCabe. You all have had this on your chair. All in favor of Mr. McCabe's substitute motion, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. Okay, that is approved. Now we're going to have the recommended book notes. Wait a second. Defeated. it. Oh, I'm sorry. The no's won. It's getting late. I'm sorry. Okay, now we have the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen of no action. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. No. That recommended vote of no action wins. No, we're going to do some things first. First of all, I want to congratulate the three young women on their civic <laughs> exercise in, in learning how to bring an article before town meeting, going through all the motions and doing it properly and with respect to everybody. Thank you very much and good luck next time. And join town meeting when you turn 18. Well, why aren't you here? Why aren't you here? Mr. Tosti. I move that Article 1 be taken from the table. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. I move that the special town All meeting please. be dissolved. All in favor of dissolving the special town meeting, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? No. I declare the special town meeting absolved. We are adjourned for the evening. See you next Monday.